Hi everyone, I'm Sanjana. I'm an intern for JA and I'm here with another fireside chat with Rita. Thank you so much, Rita, for being here. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Looking forward to it. All right, so let's just jump in right to it. So first, can you tell us about your educational and professional backgrounds and the path that you took to get to the position that you're in today? Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, my undergraduate degree is in electric engineering, I guess, uh, throughout high school and, um, and even earlier, my passion was, you know, math and science, that's all I wanted to do and, and learn about. So when it came time for college, uh, engineering was really the, the ideal situation for me, both my parents are engineers, so I got exposed to technology kind of early on. And uh, to some degree, it influenced my position because it was cool at home to talk about science and technology at the dinner table. Uh, so uh, it was just great exposure for me early on to see that side of technology, right? Uh, so when it came time to go to college, you know, engineering really was my top choice. I didn't know which major uh, specifically, electric or civil or something else but it was very clear to me when i started that electrical engineering was was um where i wanted to go and uh after i graduated from college it was really a rough year uh we were in the middle of a recession and uh very few folks had job interviews or even jobs lined up so i i was one of the few that had something lined up but really did not um, resonate with me and it wasn't something I wanted to do so I decided you know maybe I stay in school a little bit longer so I did and I started my master's in electric engineering and it was kind of ideal um, at that point given that I wasn't happy about the job that I you know that that was uh, um, that I was able to um, uh, yeah, um, and then I, during that time, I started applying for different jobs and I got an interview with AT&T and I uh, joined AT&T kind of early on, um, you know, a year after graduating uh, from Rutgers. And uh, it was kind of hard to work and finish your master's degree at the same time, but I, I did it. And after that, I decided, well, maybe it's good for me to try something a little bit different than just science and technology. So I applied to an MBA program at Rutgers and I continue as my MBA part-time um, in finance and uh, really loved to have that mix of technology and, and business. Um, and I think that kind of helped me later on because when I, you know, I, I'd been with at and over 20 years. so. Um, really love my job, love what I do, but I love always to mix technology with science and, and also just business and uh, management. So it kind of uh, worked all together. And um, I stayed with at and uh, for over 20 years, but during that time I moved around a lot. I had different jobs within the company. Um, and uh, that's the advantage you get was when you work for a big company like AT&T, you don't even have to change jobs. You, you do, but you don't have to leave the company, right? And I did that. So I did service development. I did international work a lot in the beginning of my career. And I loved, you know, traveling to Australia and all these neat places as part of my job. And uh, later on, I decided... Uh, to spend more time learning about the mobility network because that was big and growing at that point. Uh, but then eventually I, you know, I ended up in cybersecurity. That's my current position. I have a, uh, my title is VP of uh, uh, network and network security. And uh, cyber was not something that I planned to get into. It was not part of the plan, but um, somehow I got recruited into the organization that I'm in right now and I love it. Um, and it's it's really the best place to be because there's so much uh, uh, talent shortage in cybersecurity today. Uh, we, we have more jobs than people uh, and uh, it's like zero unemployment uh, and the investment in cybersecurity is, is increasing significantly. Everybody's worried about breaches and all sort of malicious actors out there and nation state attacks. Um, so it's just the best place to be. And it's great for a woman, right? We have very, very few women in that in that field. Uh, so I, I love it. And uh, I've been doing cyber for the last five years, at least. And uh, 
I find not a dull, you know, not a dull moment. Every day is a new day and a new challenge. And I really enjoy that. And uh, I think this is just a, a great place to be. So I encourage folks that are thinking about what to do with their career is to also consider, you know, technology, science, but even cyber as, as something that would be um, just, it's a growing field, uh, a lot of potential there. Actually, like on a personal note, I'm actually doing some cybersecurity research at college with a professor. And I'm also like in the business world, um, studying finance. And I'm kind of looking at the merge between, you know, financial institutions and like their cybersecurity and like ways ethical hackers can better protect, uh, you know, institutes and like targets that would be of high values. So it's actually really interesting to hear you talk about all this, like in a real world sense. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about cyber is it applies to everything we do, uh, no matter what industry or vertical you pick, uh, whether you're in healthcare, you're in technology, you're in finance, you name it, there's an always cyber element to what you do. So it's skills that you carry with you anywhere you go, right? And you combine that with business and, and finance and management, right? That, you know, you can... You can go places basically it really you know you can write your, your own ticket in a way because uh very few can you know be at the intersection of all these different things right and uh you know take advantage of different experiences and kind of put it together and, and uh, make a career out of it but whatever you do make sure you do something that you're passionate about and i always say that because that's how you excel right and sometimes I feel like you have to be flexible, especially early on in your career. You just don't know. You really don't know, right? So it's okay to try different things because when you do that, you realize, wait a second, like I, for me trying, you know, going into cybersecurity, like I said, it was not part of the plan, but when I did it, I realized, wait a second, this is like the best place to be. I love this job. This is what I meant to do, right? So it's okay to try different things. It's okay if you don't know. Um, but by trying different experiences, you will figure it out. It just, it happens organically, right? Uh, in the beginning of your career, you may be lost and not know where, where what I want to do next. Don't worry. It's normal. And it will all come together. <laughs> um, and it's okay to try different things. Absolutely. That was great advice. So did you have any sort of significant extracurricular experiences like participation in clubs or organizations or even sports that helped you later on in your career? Um, I have to say uh, yes. And I, I, it's not just, it wasn't just early on for me. I would have to say that I do more of that now that I did in the past. Um, I, you know, like when you're an undergraduate degree, you just have very little time, but I think it's true when you're working full time, but finding time to do all these extra things are really, really critical. I'll give you an example. It's more recent uh, for me. Um, this was something a couple of years ago. Um, we were just talking, a bunch of us were talking about cybersecurity and how we have shortage and talent across the whole industry. And then we realized that you can't, like the, the chief security office was in at and can't just that have, that have, that, have that responsibility for cyber alone. Everybody has responsibility to think about cybersecurity in the decisions they make day in and day out. So we decided that we need to create a culture aware uh, across the company about cybersecurity. Everybody really needs to think about cybersecurity because every job, like if you look in technology going forward, I forgot the number, but it's six out of 10 or seven out of 10 jobs and in technology would require some knowledge of cybersecurity. So we started to create this club within AT&T to put the word out that we need to be culture aware um, when, when we think about cyber, we need to think about it as part of the decisions uh, we make. So it's more about cyber aware culture across the whole company. So when you ask about, you know, things that I did in the past, it's not just back then, it's even now, it's even more important now. Um, another thing that I do a lot is just mentor different people, right? It's my way of giving back for mentors that I had early on in my career to, to think about ways to give back to the community. So I spend a lot of time, you know, mentoring, whether it's 
through, um, uh, you know, a, in AT&T or even outside of AT&T. Um, so, yes, I mean, I think it's very important. And let me tell you, uh, through that network, you connect with a lot of different people and you never know who's going to help you in the next uh, stage of your life. And that really happened to me a few years ago through uh, various community that I was part of. I met, you know, different people and they helped me get this job that I'm in today, basically. So it, build your network and also give back to the community by, by being part of these networks or clubs or whatever you call it. And it's not something you do, you know, in high school and, and college is something that, that I still do a lot of today and, and I enjoy very much. I totally agree. I think networking has been a huge theme with all of these fireside chats and it's just very important I feel for young people to realize the importance of it. It doesn't really hit once you're until you're in college. So, I think the earlier you know it, the better because as you said, you know, it helped you get to where you are today. I wouldn't be sitting here doing this internship if it wasn't for networking. So, it's just a super important skill overall. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was talking to um couple of folks at Rutgers uh, undergraduate as part of a mentoring circle that I sponsor. And one of them made the comment to me, like, I can't find a summer internship. It's very hard to align anything. And my reaction was, you know, get, get out there, even reach out to different professors, be proactive, um, find a professor who is working on something that you're interested in, make a proposal that you would work with them on that topic. Um, and, um, you know, show up at their door, right? <laughs> uh, send them emails, show that you're persistent, show that you're passion, passionate about the topic, right? Um, but yes, networking is, is, is really big, right? And uh, don't limit yourself, put yourself out there, connect with people, uh, reach out to people that you may not know, right? It's okay, it's okay to do that. Absolutely. And just taking that initiative, as you said, it goes such a long way. That's honestly how I've gotten a lot of things that I have right now, just as a freshman. So it's just super important to put yourself out there, as you mentioned. Absolutely. And I, I, I think I, I know mentoring is a big topic for me because I had great mentors early on in my career and it started in college, right? I met the chair of the electric and computer engineering department at Rutgers by coincidence I just signed up to his class at senior year and it was a very hard class it's one of the electives that nobody wants to take um, and I showed up that first day and he is not used to having women in his class it's like are you in the right place right but later on I, I reached out to him and I said um, that, you know, it was a struggle for me because I had a job lined up for the summer I wasn't happy about. And I, I said to him, I, you know, what should I do? And he said, no, don't take that job. If you're not convinced, come and work for me. And I said, what would I do? He's like, you can teach that class you just took right now, right? My point is just put yourself out there, re reach out to mentors and advisors and advocates. Uh, and people are more than willing to work with you. I mean, some folks don't realize it until you, you know, they take the initiative, right? Like you said, you got to take the initiative. You have to uh, reach out to people and connect with different people that may help you. Agreed. So you brought up the topic of mentorship. And I just want to ask you, what do you really value in a mentee? And what do you value as a mentor yourself? Like, what do you bring to the table in your relationship with a mentee? Um, I have to say I've been uh, really uh, fortunate. Like I just had really great mentors and sponsors throughout my career uh, and even before joining AT&T. And um, I personally like the relationship to be very transparent, that there is a little, there's trust, right? So you can have an open dialogue and not be fearful. Um, to put yourself out there and really talk about the issues that you're facing as part of your day job. And uh, so trust and transparencies are really critical. If you don't have that, the relationship, I mean, they're not going to be as, as helpful for you. Um, and I have to tell you, a lot of my mentors or advisors, uh, they don't have to be like senior, more senior than you are. Sometimes your peers could be your best mentors. And, and advisors, but it's very important to build those relationships throughout, you know, 
um, the company that you're in or the environment that you're in um, and uh, keep keep building on it. Like don't make sure it's not artificial, right? Because a lot of people mistaken networking to be this artificial thing. If you walk around and shake hands with a bunch of people, I don't really, I don't consider, I, I don't think that is the case, right? It needs to be really kind of, there's more substantial than that. Um, and I would say that because I, I, I think it's important for you to volunteer even to help them out, right? Like if you're working with a mentor, um, understand what business they're in. Hopefully it's a different business than you're in. Like it's a different organization or a different environment. So you can learn more about their world. Like, and that opens your eyes to like different environments, but uh, volunteer to help them out. Even if they have a, a problem that they're working on a project they're working on, it's okay to volunteer and, and get to know them. So make sure it's not artificial, right? It's not shaking hands with people but rather a, a relationship that you build over time, right? So it's it's organic. It's not something you could do in a week or two. It may take a month or a year or two, but I guarantee it will pay you off in the long term when you have all these, uh, the network of people that can help you. Um, so just make sure it's substantial and, uh, and it's built on trust and transparency. Otherwise it's just not gonna be helpful to you in, in the long term. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question. Um, no, no, it did. It was a perfect <laughs> answer. Thank you. And I agree with that with that visual that you were mentioning of uh, you know people shaking hands and like being in a room, suits and ties. Like you know it, it that is kind of the visual that you would picture as a young person. But you're right. It comes in all different shapes and forms. And now through social media, LinkedIn, like there's a whole new level of networking and meeting people and outreach. So I think it's just very important to just keep up with, with the times. I mean, you brought up a good point with social media, like networking is, is at a different level than it used to be, right? You don't have to be physically there uh, to, 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 to talk to somebody, you can connect with anybody. So it opens up a lot of doors for you, but make sure it's also not artificial, right? It's just, it's substantial. It's something you build over time. You have you know, a lot of dialogue with the mentor, with the advisor. Advocates is a big topic, right? Like, how do you take a mentor and turn them into advocates is a, is a big topic, right? Because mentors are folks that are going to give you advice. Advocates are folks that are going to advocate for you when you're not even in the room. So when a promotion is, you know, they're tr thinking about a new position or, or a promotion and you're not even in the room at that point, right? They're going to stand up and vote for you. Uh, right. So turning a mentor into an advocate back to my point about, you know, it, it's an investment. You got to invest in that relationship. Um, and sometimes you'll get something out of it and sometimes you, you wouldn't. And that's that's OK. Right. But it's building that network of, you know, hopefully mentors that you can turn into advocates over, you know, over time. Absolutely. That was perfect. <laughs> So just to end off our fireside chat, I have one last question for you. What advice would you give to young people who will be soon embarking on their professional lives? Um, I think you, got, you have to invest in yourself. And I say that all the time because folks think that I just get a place and I stay there. It doesn't work that way, especially now. Like, you know, when I first graduated from college, if you know um, a technology, that's like important and take you five years to learn about that technology. It doesn't work that way anymore. Technology is just evolving all the time. So the key message here is you have to continue to learn and pivot your skills over time, right? You can't stay still and think, oh, I, I, I'm doing really good in this job and that's that's job security it just doesn't work that way anymore you gotta have that mindset of continuous learning like think of yourself as being in school but all the time <laughs> so for folks that are in, that enjoy going to school or college or or take you know um, uh, going for a new degree or whatever they that's the way the mindset now right technology is changing all the time you gotta evolve all the time you gotta acquire new skills all the time you have to stay ahead of the game all the time you don't want to find yourself in a position that all of you you know all of a sudden your job gets eliminated right because you're comfortable and you've been comfortable in that position for a long time uh, you got to think about what's next for you and continue to invest in yourself 
That was an awesome answer. Thank you for that. And I'm sure our students will gain so much value from this session. So thank you again for being here. Excellent. Really enjoyed it. Awesome. So I will stop recording.